Thanks very much, Nicole. Um, the first thing I'd like to, to say is um, thank you to you, Brody, and to, to Christoph for all of your, your support um, over the years. I've, I've been in this role now for three years as head of legalization, um, and we've been talking about um, elect you know, digital um, and how we were going to push this forward for all of that time, plus many, many years before that. Um, and it's only obviously with your support that um, that we've got as far as we have now. So um, I really appreciate um, all that you've done to help us to get where we are now. Now, let me just see if I can share my screen. Right, so um, can you hear me okay, Nicole? Yes, we can hear you perfectly on our side. Hey, can, you see, can you see my screen now? Yes, as well. Yeah, great. Um, so um, just to give you a little bit of background on um, on the UK uh, and how we how we uh, how we deliver deliver the um, the convention here. So the the only competent authority here in the UK is is the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office um, and that's the team that uh, that I head which is the the legalization office we actually do quite a lot other than um, uh, legalizing of documents uh, we do we, we run all of the UK public facing services um, but obviously this this is uh, this is our biggest um, our, our biggest chunk of work now Obviously, like a, a lot of other um, authorities, we, you know, we, unlike a lot of other authorities, we, we're, we're centralised, whereas others are quite regional. So we deliver this in a way that is is um, is relatively innovative in that we've got three separate streams of work um, with 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 ha how we deliver um, apostes. Uh, we have a standard postal service where people send their documents through the post, but they apply online in advance and, and pay the fee. Uh, and that's by far the um, the most documents that um, that we uh, that we get through. Um, the second way that we we deal with them is through what we call our business scheme, where um, quite large third party uh, businesses um, drop off huge um, bundles of um, of applications um, and documents to us, which we then turn around on a, a, a one day. Uh, turnaround basis. So that's our second stream, and it actually helps us to to maintain our efficiency because um, they're presented to, in such a way to us um, that helps us to um, to do to, to legalise quite quickly. Uh, and the the third way is through our premium service, um, which is a public counter in our in London, um, and that caters for mainly businesses um, and those those people who need to uh, get to um, for example, an, an embassy at fairly short notice. So that's why we have a, a, a desk in London to, to deal with that because the rest of the service is dealt, dealt with at a different location, which is where we are now. So we have three quite sort of distinct but interlinked um, uh, services, um, which obviously, you know, in some ways it's really, really helpful that, um, that we can do that. Um, but in other ways, um, it can present a bit of a challenge. Uh, there's a couple of main challenges that we that, that we normally um, we normally come across, and the first one is is demand, and and you know how do we how do we predict demand? It, it's it's very difficult. Uh, we we have in the past had um, uh, seasonal peaks and troughs, um, so our summer is normally the the, the major peak. Um, and then uh, through some of the winter months is, is, is the low season. Um, but certainly as the last sort of year and a half have, have shown us, 
um, that can change quite uh, quite dramatically. Um, so it's been very difficult to to forecast. And the second thing is how do we how do we resource um, resource our, our service you know if, if we can't if we can't really that accurately predict demand it's really hard to to know how many people we need to li- deliver the service at any one time um, plus there's also um, it's, it's also quite difficult to get staff uh, because they have to go through a number of um, security checks before before they can work for us given the work that we do um, so you know th- th- those are our sort of our biggest two uh, challenges really um in in how we deliver the service now and the slide that i've put up is is to show you um over the last it's kind of four and a half um financial years how the uk um demand has changed so as you can see in in the year 18 to 19 that was our our biggest year um that was actually my first year in this role and and it 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 seemed to be normal um, at that point, um, I was led to believe by my colleagues that that wasn't quite the case, and it was a little bit higher than it would usually be. But then you can see, as as we go through 1920 and 2021, um, it sort of gradually tails off. And through 1920, that was um, the, out, the 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 reason that we've come up with that uh, that it tailed off. It was because of the uh, the UK's exit from the EU. Um, making things quite uncertain and making the economic outlook um, quite different. Um, there was quite a lot of changes to sort of the business environment um, with uh, with people not really knowing what was next. Because um, obviously, you know, around EU exit, there was an awful lot of uncertainty and it went on for a little bit longer than, than we all expected. And then through 2021, as you can see, it went down even further. Um, and, that, and that was not only um, was it the pandemic, but it was also a further knock on from from EU exit. But obviously the pandemic had had the biggest hit on us uh, in terms of volumes then. Um, as you can see in the red bar at the end, um, this this is a 21-22 financial year, which we have literally got to halfway uh, at the end of September. Um, and as you can see, that uh, that that bar there is, is heading um, and it's probably going to be our biggest, uh, our bu- busiest year so far. So we're expecting that to exceed the 18-19 figure, and that's going to be because um, uh, because of the, of the, the picking up of um, of so much of the uh, the work that couldn't be done during the pandemic, um, and and just basically people catching up um, with with with, um, with business really. Um, and we expect that to, to last for at least a couple of years until until things become a bit more stabilised. So just um, uh, getting on to the, um, the EAPOS D project, um, we initially investigated um, how and if we should do this way back in 2012, so uh, a good nine years ago now. So that's how long it's going, been going on for in, in the UK. Um, and I'm sure there are others that would say it was longer than that. Um, we, um, we did a, an initial investigation um, but we decided at that time that well, the UK just wasn't really ready to go in that direction, and we weren't really sure that um, the other um, other nations were were perhaps ready for that as well in terms of the acceptance um, of of the digital um, the digi- digital apostille. So we made the call then that we would. Um, we would put that on hold um, for the time being, um, but we did actually go forward with the e-register component, uh, which went live in 2014. Um, so that 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 would have, you know, that, that was just it, it was a, a bit of a, uh, a rather more straightforward situation. We had quite a lot of the infrastructure um, ready to to attach um, such a register to. Um, so actually putting it onto onto a digital platform was 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 really straightforward. So it was um, and plus it saved it saved staff time at this end uh, and enabled other authorities to be able to check um, the validity of apostes issued by us um, themselves. Um, so as we fast forward to 2019, um, we decided that we were going to revisit um, the the uh, EAPP project um, for the UK, uh, and that was following um, our um, our attendance at the 11th uh, 
uh, EAPP forum in Brazil, um, where we were able to make quite a lot of contacts uh, with with uh, other countries, um, and we were able to try and understand uh, how other people had uh, had actually, you know, pushed pushed their own projects along and think about and, and understand the challenges that they had had. Um, and it was really at this point that that, that we came back uh, from that uh, from that forum with with a renewed vigour to, to to try and push ahead with it um, and to to try and make it work for us. Obviously, this is you know seven years down the road from the previous time that we'd said that we weren't we weren't going to move forward. So you know a lot moves on in technology in in seven years time. So we, we got back from uh, from. The, the forum and we pretty much all, almost straight away kick-started um, the, uh, the initial discovery of, um, of a project and we, we employed a, uh, a business analyst to do that for us um, but unfortunately when we, when we obtained the final product that that business analyst had, had um, taken forward for us it didn't give us really all the information that we needed to be able to um, to make a really good case to, to the people that hold the purse strings here um, to, to go forward with it. Because, you know, as we all know, these, these sorts of technologies do cost quite a bit of money. Um, and, you know, we, this is taxpayers' money at the end of the day. And, and we need to be able to make a really strong case to be able to, to, to move forward with such a project. So, Going back to having met a number of um, authorities um, where we uh, where we were able to share digital knowledge, um, you know, we decided that internally, even though we'd uh, we'd not had the best of uh, of luck with um, with the report, we decided we were going to uh, we would take things forward um, in a sort of a, a low key kind of way, and and you know, develop the information that we'd got. Um, uh, and, and see if we could we could start sort of really building a, a better case for us to, to 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 move things forward because we knew it was it was going to be the way that that uh, the things were going and you know apart from anything else it was really important for us not to get left behind. Um, so we managed to to put a, a much stronger case together. Um, uh, internally between myself and, and my colleagues um, and um, we we gradually got to the point where we where we could um, we could start looking at how we might actually do this and we decided that the best way that we, we could do it was to uh, bring in um, a number of uh, external experts basically uh, because Although we do have a level of technical expertise within um, the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, um, we often we often sort of un under uh, underutilize um, the ability to to bring in external supplies because we think we can do it ourselves. But actually, this this is quite a a complex um, a, a complex uh, digital. Um, uh, move for us um, so we, we decided that, uh, that that we would benefit far more from um, external suppliers um, and we have we have people on board such as um, uh, business analysts we have um, you know people who, who basically write code we've, we've got pretty much everybody like that you could possibly need to to be able to put a really good uh, product together um, and make it work uh, really well Obviously, then uh, COVID uh, got in our way um, and slowed things down quite a lot. Um, we spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, reflecting on on where we'd got to and where we needed to go next. Um, we 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 had to bring in those external suppliers, those external experts, um, without any knowledge of uh, legalisation, and we had to we had to do things quite um, quite virtually. Um, which obviously meant that they, you know, they didn't come into the office. They didn't come and uh, and see how things work. We had to do that in a very in a very sort of virtual way. Um, so that that raised a few challenges for us. Um, but we got there. Um, we, you know, that those those experts have have supported the 
um, well, they, they've basically run the um, they've run the the project for us together with um, our digital and technology manager, who we recruited uh, specifically for for um, EAPP and other digital product uh, projects uh, further down the road. Um, and we have, you know, we, we have that that setup where we've got really good governance um, for the project. Um, and and we, we you know we use regular checkpoints to make sure that we're doing all the right things. You know we we make sure that people challenge us for you know just for what what we what we are doing. Uh, are we going in the right direction? Um, have we spent that money right? Uh, so all those things are obviously really important um, and um, are taken really seriously. Um, and we're now at the stage where, um, with the help of um, some of our our trusted notary colleagues, um, and I'll name check Michael Lightowler here, um, as he's a, a very keen advocate, as you all know, of, um, of, of going digital. Um, we are about to roll out a private uh, beta pilot, uh, which we, we hope to do so by the end of this month, if not early next. Um, so, what we've decided to do, um, the uh, the supplier that we we brought in has has built um, has built the service. Um, they've, they've actually built the the application that we're going to work with. Um, it will um, it will be a self service application that that's created by the customer um, through an online portal, much the same as they do now. Uh, but then the customer will need to upload their document to the portal in a in a PDF format. Um, and they then pull through directly to our, our case management system um, and they are automatically then attached to the application that the, the customer has submitted. Um, when those documents are pulled through, um, our case management system will automatically recognize the digital signature. Uh, and if it's already present on our database, it will be matched um, in an automatic way. Um, and then, if that's the case, if it is matched and the signature is already there on our database, um, the operator literally needs to check that the document meets requirements that, that, that we've set through our policy, um, and then the document can be legalised. If the, the signature isn't there and isn't matched within our system, then much the same as we do now with, with, with paper apostes, uh, we would need to, um, to seek verification of that signature through contacting the person who signed, uh, who's actually signed the document. So then once the apostille is issued, the digital apostille is issued uh, and the application is fully complete, uh, the legalised documents are then pulled back through, the, uh, through to the portal um, for the customer then to download. Um, and we're currently working on how long they will have to download them um, because it, it very much depends on, um, on that as, as to, to, to which way we, we sort of go with, um, with our instructions to customers because we might have a 14-day period where they can download we might have a 28 day period they can download um but, but either way we would need to make sure there's some sort of a, a deadline for uh for reasons of data data protection and retention of, of documentation um so this is this is how things will broadly look um we have a cover sheet with the original documents and the apostille will be attached um there's no there's no way that we would um we would I use the word tamper with um, with a, a digital um, uh, uh, signature coming through uh, because obviously we want to make sure that the structure um, of, of what we're putting together preserves all the underlying digital signatures and and, and the documents are, um, are are absolutely you know acceptable for for all receiving authorities. Um, so it's it's I, I say this being a really non technical person, um, it's a relatively straightforward. Um, start to finish process, um, but obviously there's, there's quite big security implications um, and, and you know security um, guidelines we've got to think of when we're putting all this together, uh, just to make sure that we get it right and we don't have the um, the concerns over uh, over you know, issues with cyber. As I know, I know we you know we just generally have um, uh, these days with with pushing forward with digital. Um, so we've got to be obviously very careful and very um, and very diligent around that side of things. So why did we decide to do it now? Well, 
as I explained uh, a couple of minutes ago, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, it, it was difficult for us here in the UK, as I think it was for, for pretty much everybody. Um, it did mean that when it first started back in, in March last year, we actually had to close our service for a few days uh, because of uh, we, we did actually have a small outbreak in the team. Um, and... You know, we, we, we felt that because we knew so little about uh, COVID, it was really important to make sure we kept the team safe, um, along with every other staff member. So uh, we briefly closed until we could make our office um, uh, what we call COVID safe now. Um, but obviously that had an impact on the customer um, and it meant that the customer wasn't necessarily able to be helped uh, when they needed it. We, we, re we did retain, even through the most difficult times, we retained an urgent, um, an urgent legalization route that people could use. Um, but with the volumes that we, that, that, of, of applications that were required to be legalized, that obviously wasn't sustainable for, for too long. Um, so we did need to come back to bringing in, you know, bringing back legalization. But obviously, uh, you know, a, a digital solution will will improve the resilience um, of our of our team here, uh, and it will mean, you know, further instances of, um, of things like COVID, not actual COVID, because I think I think we're, we're getting into a bit of a position now where we're all, uh, well, lots of, uh, you know, are back in the office and we are uh, we are relatively comfortable in that respect but we do need to think about what what else what else is out there and what other things we could we could encounter so the more digital we go the more staff can do uh from the the comfort of their own home um and we don't then need to to bring staff into the office um, needlessly um we're also finding that more and more uk documents are becoming um digitally signed um i mean we're, we're by no means um there yet in terms of you know being able to to, to to move in the, the, the sort of full digital direction, uh, not by a long shot, uh, but we are starting to see uh, more documents becoming uh, com coming in that are digital and, and we can we can deal with them in a different way. Um, we also have a, a UK government um, agenda which is digital by default. So if there's a, a new um, a new solution to something, uh, we should we should be thinking instantly can we do this digitally um and and that's where we should go so um if we uh if we're looking at all the things that we're doing in this this, this office in in terms of the processes that we go through um we should be pushing more and more towards a digital by default agenda and therefore you know supporting just general resilience um through the, the foreign commonwealth development office and then we also thought if, if we didn't do it now then when would we do it uh, when would be a good time? Um, the the COVID nineteen pandemic obviously gave us a real, um, you know, ugh, dreadful as it has been. It, it's on this particular agenda, it has given us a bit of a push, um, and in internally in in, in the organisation, um, more senior colleagues have, have have decided that this is you know the right way to go. We are we are right in in doing this, um, and we. We find that you know now this has happened and now we we need that 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 much more resilience. Um, we we feel much much better supported um, and able to to push this forward. Um, we did come across a few challenges. Um, firstly, um, really, where do we even start? Um, I know you, you you'll know as I said at the, at the beginning, we've been talking about this for many many years, um, but. Um, and, and you know, Brody and uh, Christoph know that you know without you know, we've said before without any agreed standards, it's actually quite difficult um, to to sort of come at this this project. Um, and you know, it, it, it's quite difficult to find any sort of um, any expertise that that actually knows where to start on these sorts of things. So we did have a little bit of a challenge where where that was concerned. Um, we did, as I've already said as well, we had internal obstacles with, um, you know, with funding and making sure that this was the right, the right thing to do, um, uh, and, and to make sure we had the right project governance in place. There's always the risk that you you spend an awful lot of money, and and in I think I think we're talking hundreds of thousands um, of, of pounds 
into a project and then it becomes what you what, what we would call a white elephant so something that basically nobody nobody wants to use um so we we have to be able to give our customers assurance um as well as uh, as well as the ability to, to apply for um, a digital um, apostasy, they have to have the assurance and the confidence that where they're going to present it, they are, that that is going to be acceptable. Um, which kind of comes into the next point, the justification around around having such a project. Is it really worth it? You know, are we spending all this money on a digital solution? What What's going to be our, our the, what's going to be the benefit from it? Are we going to save any money long term? Or is the is the main reason um, that that to do it is, is to keep up with everybody else and and and, and the whole the whole resilience um, aspect. I mean, personally speaking, I've sold this this project to anybody that I can sell it to um, as a as a real positive um, for for us uh, with our resilience and with our well being. Um, and I think that's something that's that's. Uh, to, a total justification and, and is you know one of the most important things that 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 uh, that we think about these days when when we're talking about um, improvements we shouldn't just, just be doing it for the sake of it we should be doing it for a very good reason um, and um, something that I've learned over this project is it doesn't have to be for a fun, necessary for a financial reason obviously you want to make sure that you've got those benefits in there but it should cover a real wide range of benefits as well um, it was difficult for us to find niche expertise. You know, where to, where do we start? You know, how do we find people to do this sort of work? Um, and we needed to seek the uh, the support of some some of our wider colleagues here um, to help us to find that expertise. Um, we found some brilliant expertise now, and the and, and the team that we, we're working with are absolutely phenomenal. So we're 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 massively lucky to have found them. Um, as is our digital technology manager. Um, he uh, he works with them really closely. So we now do have that niche expertise um, in the team. Um, and the other the other thing that I think lots of people are concerned about is what would be the acceptance across um, various authorities. Um, and I think uh, I think the lady who presented last also alluded to that as to whether there would be that sort of global acceptance of, of digital, um, which I think is still something we we need to to, to consider. Um, but obviously, making sure that that that's that the onus, um, from our perspective, the onus has to be on the customer to find out uh, whether whether that that their digital um, apostasy will be accepted uh, to the authority that they're going to present it to. And then fi the final challenge was really, um, it was cost. Um, you know, the, the, the whole thing is going to cost us an awful lot of money. Um, and do we really have the justification to do it? Um, so, yeah, a whole range of, of, of challenges that we, uh, that we came up against. Um, this is my final slide, I promise. Um, and this is just on the future hopes for, um, for the digital, the EAPP. So, um, in the UK, we hope that we'll have adoption of digital signatures from all of our partners across government. So, we we, we hope that um, you know we're we're not necessarily the most advanced in terms of technology in in um, Her Majesty's government, um, but we are moving in the right direction. Um, so, this is a very very much a future a future hope that we will be able to to work with our 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 partners across government and um, help them. Uh, in any way we can to, to to be able to adopt digital signatures. Uh, we have had a few uh, a few government departments contact us already, um, so that is definitely moving in the right direction. And it's actually really nice for us, although we are only a really small part of the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Um, it's really nice for us to have that that sort of that profile of being a, a front runner uh, in, in UK government on these things. Um, this will obviously then mean that we can uh, we can get uh, EAPOSD integrated with other government departments. Um, so it means that um, uh, customers can order their documents from other government departments and literally get them straight, straight sent to us. Um, and then we can just legalise them directly, which will save the customer um, a lot of time um, and probably quite a lot of effort. Um, and then it will it will it will just generally make things a lot smoother. Which will then, in theory, and probably beyond my time in this role, um, lead to uh, what I always like to call legalisation nirvana, which is it's an end-to-end -end legalisation from the point of issue, which is essentially a system whereby um, 
we've got that uh, those digital signatures coming through from other government departments they literally hit our our case management system and they basically automatically are recognized and they are they are and the apostille is issued there and then with very very little if 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 any um uh user interaction now i know there's other other countries that have have gone have actually made it quite far down that road already which is you know, all kudos to them that's it, it's amazing um sadly i think that's uh, that's some way off for us here in the uk because we're perhaps not quite as joined up um in in the government department situation as as, as many countries are uh, and then finally it's it's you know we hope that there will be universal acceptance from receiving authorities because then that does give us um, us and the customer um real um confidence um that uh that, that they that, that customers can go in this direction and um that there will be no no sort of um no arguments down the road of whether they can or cannot be accepted um and i think that's something that's really important i think it's something we should we should be really pushing um through obviously through the the secretariat um and obviously our, ourselves in our bilateral um dealings with, with with other nations as well so that's basically everything from me um so thank you very much for um for listening um and i hope it's useful for um for, for those of you who are sort of starting to think about your journey obviously we're not quite finished yet we are going to like i say we're going to our private um uh, uh pilots in the next few weeks so there's a little way to go um but we're an awful lot further on than i had um perhaps expected us to be at this stage um so uh please do get in contact if you want any um any support um going forward thank you very much, thank you very much.